Hello, my name is Martin Body, and this is my first year assignment for CAM 1068 Bootcamp Post Production Semester 2 2023. The brief for the module is Pixels to Print, essentially taking a photograph and then demonstrating the use of post capture software to process the image. Finally, the image should be printed out and the whole process documented in a 5 to 7 minute video. I've chosen a sculpture by Colin Rose, a sculptor and artist from Newcastle. The sculpture is called Swirl and it represents a vortex, a central point for traffic and people visiting the area around Baltic Place on the Gateshead side of the Tyne. Let's have a look at the images. I really like the sculpture. It's been described as resembling a slinky, but I think it looks quite surrealistic from the viewpoint I've chosen. As you can see in the bottom left, I have three shots with slightly different exposures and compositions. The camera is a Sony A7R2 with a Sony 24-70mm f2.8 zoom lens. The settings were 24mm, ISO 100 and f11 on average priority. f11 because I wanted the whole sculpture in focus. Shutter speed was varied between 200th and 1000th of a second. I took the photographs in RAW format to give me as much scope for adjustment as possible. And even though I do plan to experiment by replacing the sky, I have underexpose one image in particular to keep as much detail in the sky as possible. This is because shadows are easier to recover than blown highlights. At this point I haven't chosen which image I will use, but whichever it is, I will be removing the buildings and straight lights because I just want a clean image of the sculpture. Anyway, the first step, since these are raw images, is to develop them using the sliders provided in Lightroom here. Okay, let's look at this image. It's underexposed, but we can adjust the exposure here. And that's better. There are a number of other adjustments we can make to the image. Under this light section, we can adjust contrast, low contrast to high contrast. And all of these adjustments can be reset can bring down highlights or increase highlights. We can bring back shadow detail or we can darken the shadows. And we can adjust whites and blacks in isolation from the other colors. Further down we've got color adjustments. We can adjust the colour temperature or the white balance. We can warm the image up or we can cool the image down. We've got a green magenta tint adjustment I never use. And we can adjust the vibrance and saturation of all of the colours on the screen, on the image. Further down again, we can pick an individual colour and adjust the saturation in that. So if we pick blue for this image, we're going to be able to increase the saturation in the blue sky without affecting the other colours in the image. We have a number of effects, so we can add texture or smooth the texture out, clarity does a similar job, dehaze can also do a similar job. We can add a vignette, black vignette or a white vignette and the grain can give an effect like old film. A grainy film. Oh, noise looks like noise on the sensor. It can look quite good. So from here we can also look at the photograph and see if there are any imperfections that we might want to get rid of. I see an ugly spot just there. So we can select a healing tool 
and we're going to select the content aware this is an AI tool content aware healing tool and we can just paint that imperfection out and that is gone we can have a look over the rest of the photograph and see if there are any spots due to specs on the lens or in the sensor and to help us do that we can look at this tool to be honest the image looks fairly clean maybe a little spot there just spotted another problem that we might have here if we look in this area here there's a very dark shadow down the side of the, the sculpture it just seems to be where the light doesn't catch it but we may have to deal with that in Photoshop later on. But for now, I'm just going to carry on adjusting this image until I get it close to where I want it. And then we may do some adjustments in Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to look through all the images and cleaned them all up. I've chosen this one and you can see I've taken away quite a few more of the spots that were spoiling the look of the uh, sculpture you can see that we're still at the two two stops adjustment that we put on to bring the exposure back to where it should be a little bit of contrast I've pushed hard on the shadows to try to get rid of as much of this dark shadow as I can and I've added just a little tiny bit more saturation to the sky to compensate for the fact that we've lightened up the image considerably so now this is ready to open in Photoshop to have an experiment with changing the sky. And there we go. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy our background layer. And that means we can always get back to square one if we make any mistakes. I still don't like this dark heavy shadow here. So we're going to have to work on that at some time. So what I'm going to do is um, isolate the subject so I can work on it individually. So there are a number of ways you can do that. You would use normally one of the lasso tools. So if the circular lasso tool is useful for picking up something quickly polygonal lasso tool is good for subjects with straight edges but for a subject like this the magnetic tool would be the one that you use this works quite easily by you just following an edge so if you just click on an edge then you can just drag the cursor around the object and the magnetic tool will stick to a very closely defined edge and you can carry on and isolate the whole subject like this however there is another AI tool which is worth trying, which is select subject and Photoshop will pick up the subject automatically for us there. I'm going to copy that and paste it in as a new layer. And we've got a new layer there, which is just a subject that we can work on independently. What I'm going to do now is try a sky replacement. So, easily done in Photoshop. And we've got to replace sky. The way this, this works is to do a blending. Um, effect so that it's not a sharp too sharp an edge but you can see that this is just a blue sky and you can see a residue of the original image there i'm going to just take that away so you don't see so much of that and that's fine however we don't want a plain blue sky let's go for something a bit more interesting you can see that 
there are a number of options here. We could go for a kind of industrial look perhaps. Looks quite good. However, I'm going to look for something a little bit more surreal, I think. We'll just have a bit of fun. Here we go. Let's try this one. Okay, I like that. What I'm going to do with this now is just move it around slightly so that we get a little bit more interesting composition. We can bring some of that yellow light in at the bottom in a cloud over the top there. And that's fine. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the layer mask from the sky because I've already got a layer in there. I don't need this. But we're going to leave in all the lighting that um, Photoshop puts in automatically. That just means you get some reflection on the subject. So now I'd like to do something about this dark shadow here. So we'll zoom in. And what we can try is we can try the using the eraser tool on this layer and that should paint away some of that darkness we could try taking it in a little bit so we get to the, the lighter portion That kind of works. But it's difficult getting the edge smooth. So we're going to try something else. And we can try a technique from Darkroom Days, Dodge and Burn. We use a dodge tool we should actually be able to lighten up areas along this edge so that we can see a little bit more of the shadow and we can just work that in and that's it they're working the highlights out towards the edge now and that's breaking up that dark shadow since we're working on the layer mask it's not affecting the sky. And that's starting to look a lot better, in my opinion. I think that looks better. And I'm quite happy with that. What I'm going to do with it now is save it. I'm going to save it in Photoshop format so we keep all of the attributes. And I'm going to take that into university and print it off. Final stages then. We made a test template with three small images at slightly different exposures, half a stop lighter and darker than the original. I felt the lighters one looked best. And so a template was sized for an A4, retaining a narrow border for the final print. And that's the end of this video for my bootcamp project. Thank you very much and good night.